guys. Um, welcome to uh, my thoughts and uh, my take on the place in the Bible where uh, there's probably some, definitely some uh, erroneous teaching or thinking on what I'm about to talk about. So, um, it concerns being under whoever you uh, yield yourselves servants to obey. Uh, and that is, that's who you're going to be a servant to. So, it's, it's, um, and it says, whether a person yields herself to sin unto death, or whether a person yields herself to uh, righteousness unto life. And so, uh, basically, the idea is if if a person yields themselves to uh, you know the temptation of sin doing something bad, then that is the, uh, you will become a slave to that, or yielding, someone yielding their self to doing righteous things, doing right things, then they will be a servant to that, they'll be a slave to that, and so, um, what I have been uh, taught or what has been revealed to me, what has been made clear to me, is that that verse there is talking about um, in the context of all people being born under under the law and born into sin by Adam because of Adam and Eve. And so, we have, because Christ came, now we have two choices. It's like whoever you see yourself being under, however you see yourself is, is um, going to determine if you, um, is going to determine how you live. So, for instance, what it's talking about there is under Adam, all have sinned. God concludes everyone born into sin. So everyone now qualifies for uh, the saving grace and the saving power that happens when we believe in the faith. And by the faith, I mean... Because Christ took on himself all of our sins and became sin for us, now I take and receive his righteousness. And so, which and who am I yielding myself to? Am I seeing myself still under Adam's um, offense under his disobedience or do I see myself and do I believe myself to be under grace which is seeing myself in Christ delivering me from the law because he fulfilled the law and so you know, there's, it's become very clear that under Adam and by and because of Adam, all have sinned. And not because, and all are called sinners, not because necessarily of any sin that they have done, but because of our father Adam, we have been born into 
sin, born under the law, right? But the way out is Christ, who's called the second Adam, right? Was came in the likeness of sinful flesh, but having done no sin, he came in the likeness. He wasn't sinful flesh. He came in the likeness of sinful flesh to save those who were born into sin and born under the law. So the discrepancy and the question that I had for a long time and my not understanding for a long time was, you know, well, how do I live? What do I live by if I'm not living by the law, right? Not that anyone could live by the law or be justified by the law, the Bible says. No flesh will be justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, it says. Because why? Because the just shall live by faith. So, because the second Adam came, which is Christ, Jesus, because of his obedience, right? Now, because of his obedience, I'm trusting in his obedience, not my own in obedience, right? I'm not trusting in myself or hankering that I can do something to um, gain passage into heaven, right? Christ has become my mediator and become the mediator between God, God the Father in heaven, and man on earth, man and women on earth. So, so now, um, and it also talks about how we are not, we are no longer married to the law. For those who believe, this is not for everybody. So, for those who believe, right? I am no longer married to the law, and, he, and, and but I am married to another, which is Christ. And so, um, I mean, it's just good news. It's just, it's good news. This is the gospel of God. This is the. This did not come from a man. It is not from man's head. It is from not. It is not from man's heart. It isn't uh, a man's idea. Okay. This is from God. God talks about it like this. It is the gospel. It is the good news of gospel. Means good news. It is the good news of the Father in heaven. So it is the good news of the Father in heaven. It is not, it is not a man's um, gospel. It is not, uh, you know, someone didn't think this up. It is from the Creator Himself, and so, um, yeah, that's that's what um that's what was on my mind. Uh, that's what I wanted to talk about. This idea of being. This idea that if a person does wrong, right? If a person sins, and that word sin is hamartia in the Greek, and it means to miss the mark. So if I'm an archer or aiming for something and I come short of hitting the bullseye, I have missed the mark. In essence, I have sinned. No matter how close I come to that red dot, right? No matter how close my arrow comes to the dot, right? I've still missed the mark. If I'm a half inch off, if I'm an inch off, if I'm a fraction of a hair off that mark, right? I have sinned, right? And so whether it's in thought or deed, um, that word sin means missing the mark. So no matter, uh, and, and I believe that everyone has missed the mark in life. Um, but this, like I said, this isn't for everybody. This is for those who believe. This is for those who have ears to hear. This is for those who can receive. And so, um, the idea there that 
to whom, the verse says, to whom we yield ourselves servants to obey. So it's either I'm yielding myself to, um, to Adam and what he brought into the world, right? Through his disobedience, through his offense. Adam and Eve from them eating of the thing that they were not, from them partaking of the thing that they were not supposed to partake of, right? So once they did that, now death passed. Death came into the world and sin came into the world and death by sin, but it didn't happen right away. There was a spiritual death that occurred and then eventually um, it would work its way out that men and women would die on the earth and deterioration and aging and all these things and sickness and diseases would come into the world, right? So um, I'm either yielding myself and believing that I'm still under that, that uh, which Adam did, or I'm yielding myself to obedience unto righteousness, it says, un obedience unto righteousness. And so it's not, it's not um, that I'm obeying something of a set of rules or regulations um, or the Ten Commandments that I could be righteous now. No, like I said before, God says that that by the deeds even, by the very deeds, by the very doing, by the very obeying of the law, no man, no flesh is justified, it says. So, so then you're like, well, how in the world do I get justified? How can I um, be cleared of everything in my life that I have done wrong or thought wrong or not even if I, you know, not, not even necessarily because I've done anything, but because I was born into sin. How can I um, be cleared? And the, the Bible and God tells us that how I can be cleared is by the faith. It's by having faith in Christ, in Jesus, have, having faith in another, having faith in the innocent one, that what he did took care of all um, missing the mark, all sin. And so, and if for those who can receive, for those who believe, for those who understand this, how was Abraham, but before he was Abraham, but how was Abraham and Sarah um, found righteous or found right in the sight of God, found justified in God's sight? 400, at least 30 years before the law even came, how was Abraham seen righteous in God's eyes? And it says that Abraham believed God he believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Um, and so, what did he believe? How is anyone on earth justified? God talks about, we're justified by believing. We're justified by believing. We're justified by, and another word for believing or believe is faith, aman, in Greek. So, how am I justified by, in this world? Not justified like to continue on in the wrong way. Justified in God's sight. Justified in God's eyes. Cleared in God's eyes. Not, not horizontally with, between men and women, but vertically between God. Right? God and myself. How am I cleared? How is a person cleared? And the Bible's very clear and how he says and what it says about how one is cleared, how a person is cleared. I'm cleared by believing the Father, by believing God. Believing God how? Believing God in what way? 
in his gospel? What gospel did he send? What good news is there in the world? What good news is there between that has to do with a man and his creator, a woman and her creator? What good news is there that the Father, God, sent his only son, right, into the world, that he was reconciling the world to himself. The Father God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. Not counting their sins against them, he says. So that's good news right there. And for those who believe that God is mad at them or that God has something against them, right? The Christian, this is for the Christian believer and for those who have ears to hear who are not who do not believe in the Creator, who do not believe in God, all right? Um, there's good news for even those who don't believe in God or don't, or ha who haven't heard of this good news that I'm talking about. God's not mad at you. God's not mad at um, his sons and daughters. He's not mad at creation, right? He promised that he would never be wroth towards us because because of Christ's sacrifice God accepted Christ's sacrifice on Calvary over 2,000 years ago that stands and the cross stands outside of time and so, excuse me, he would accept Christ's sacrifice, right, um, on our behalf. He is the great high priest who, who um, sacrificed himself for us because of the great love that he had towards us and for us and for his creation. He was not willing that any should perish but that all would come to the knowledge of his son. This is the Father's good news, right? And everywhere you read, whenever you read the Bible, wherever you read, you know, different things that Jesus was saying, he said he didn't come on his own accord. He said that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And what was Jesus doing constantly? What was Jesus doing? He was healing sick folk. He was casting uh, de demons out of people. He was bringing um, the, the demons that were bringing demonic oppression to people, um, bringing sickness and disease, right, on people. Uh, Jesus was righting all the wrongs. He was righting all wrongs. Um, the blind saw those who could not see after they touched Jesus after Jesus touched them or just spoke the word they were healed uh, if, a, if a deaf person came to him the deaf person left hearing if a lame person came to him the lame person got up and walked all right um, if a young man came to him with a little bit of food he multiplied the food to feed thousands right and so everyone who came to Christ everyone who came to Jesus right came away with the benefit of a better life they came away they left Christ they left his presence seeing hearing walking the leprous were healed the lepers were healed right um, those who came to Jesus and trusted in Jesus, believed in Jesus, amand Jesus, had faith in Jesus, right? And what he was doing in him, their dead were raised. So <clears throat> he said he was the, he is and was the resurrection and the life. He is the great physician. And so there's so many topics that I could run 
run off with just even in talking about the um, who we yield ourselves to obey. Who I yield myself a servant to obey. Um, Adam, under Adam, which sin pervades and will rule, and under the law as well, or under Christ, in Christ, under grace, in this ministry of grace that he's, in this ministry of righteousness that he, it, it, he talks about, which is his righteousness, not my own, but his. So for those who have, you know, a heart and ears to hear, this is for you. For those who don't, it's just, it doesn't make sense, it's foolishness, it's foolishness. For those who understand and for the word that has broken through today, um, it's the very power of God in your life working. So I got a lot more things that I want to share, but that's all that I'm going to do for today. So if this helped you or brought value to your life in any way, um, please um, subscribe and uh, give me that thumbs up. I appreciate it. See you now.